So far in this course, we have learned about components and directives in great detail. And we learned that components and directives are the fundamental building block of an Angular application. Another very important feature of Angular is services. So in this lecture, we are going to understand what is a service in Angular and what is its use. So let's see a use case where a service can be helpful. And then we will talk about services and what is the advantage of using a service. Let's say we are developing a simple Angular application where a user can subscribe to the service that the application provides. Here, I'm showing a portion of that application. Now, in this application, we have three main components. So if we separate those components, you will notice that here we have a header component, we have another component, and we also have a third component. And in each of these three components, we have a subscribe button. So in the header component also, we have a subscribe button. In this second component also, we have a subscribe button. And in this third component also, we have a subscribe button. And all these three subscribe buttons are going to do the same thing. It is going to subscribe the user to the web application. Now, in order to subscribe the user, we need to write the subscription logic. And that subscription logic will be executed whenever one of these subscribe buttons are clicked. For example, when the subscribe button is clicked, we might want to call a method called onSubscribe, which will contain the subscription logic. And when this method is called, we will subscribe the user to the application and also send a mail to the user with the subscription details. Now, since we have this subscribe button in three different components and these components are independent of each other, we will have to write the subscription logic in all these three components. And if we have any other component like this, where we want to show the subscribe button, in that component also, we will have to write the same subscription logic. Now, there are several disadvantages with this approach. First of all, since we are going to write the same code for subscription logic in all three components, here we are repeating the code. And this approach violates the dry principle. That means do not repeat yourself. Here, we are repeating the same logic. We are repeating the same code in three different component classes. Another problem with this approach is that we know that we use component to create a UI and define UI logics. So components should only focus on showing UI to the user. But when we write the subscription logic in the component class, subscription logic has nothing to do with the UI. It is a business logic. So here we are mixing business logic with the UI logic. And that is not a good programming approach. So to avoid all these problems, it would be great if we can write the subscription logic in a separate centralized file, which can be accessed by all the components. So whichever component want to use the subscription logic, it can directly call the subscription logic written in the centralized file. And we can achieve this using services in Angular. So in this example, what we can do is we can create a service. We can call it maybe subscribe service. And in that subscribe service, we will write this subscription logic. And whichever component would want to use that subscription logic, it can use the subscribe service for that. In this example, we want to use the subscription logic in this header component where we have this subscribe button. We also want to use the subscription logic in this component. Here also we have the subscribe button. And we want to use this subscription logic in this third component as well. So now, instead of writing that subscription logic separately in each of these components, we have written that subscription logic in a service class. And whichever component want to use that subscription logic, it can directly access it from that service class. In this way, we will have a single copy of that subscription logic, which can be reused throughout the Angular application. Now, the advantage of this approach is that services allows us to reuse a piece of code in multiple components wherever it is required. In this way, we avoid repeating a piece of code again and again. And it also allows us to separate business logic from UI logic. We write UI logic in the component class and we write our business logic in the service class. In this way, it provides separation of concern. Also, we can unit test the business logic written in the service class separately without creating a component. So it also makes testing and debugging easier. So now we have one service class which contains the subscription logic and whichever component in this Angular application wants to use that subscription logic, it can directly access it from the service class. That component class do not have to implement that subscription logic. It can simply reuse it from the service class. So from this example, we can say 
that a service is a reusable TypeScript class that can be used in multiple components across our Angular application. So a service in Angular allows us to reuse a code in multiple places in our Angular application. And a service also allows us to separate the UI logic from the business logic. We write our UI logic in the component class and we write the business logic in the service class. Let's see another use case where we can use a service. So let's say we are creating an e-commerce application and we are selling some product from this e-commerce application. Now products are stored in a database and in order to display those products to the user, we need to make an API call to get the product data. Now in this application, we have two components where we are displaying the products. So if we separate these components, you will notice that here we have two components, this second component and this third component where we are displaying the list of products. In this component, we are showing all the products and in the second component, we are showing only the featured products. So in order to display these products, we need to make an API call to fetch product data. And to make the API call, we need to write the data access logic in our Angular application. Now without services, we will have to write that data access logic in both of these components where we need to display the product. In this way, again, we will repeat the same code in both the components and we will violate the dry principle. And also we will be writing business logic in the component class, which is another disadvantage. So again, here we can make use of services and we can define the data access logic in that service class and reuse it in the components where we need it. And in this way, we are using a service to reuse a piece of code at multiple places in our Angular application. And this is the main use of a service in Angular. We use services to define a reusable code in our Angular application. Another use case where we can use a service is when we want to communicate between two non-related components. So let's say we have an Angular application and the component tree of that Angular application looks something like this. So at the top, we have our root component, which is the app component. And in that root component, we have header component, container component and footer component as its child component. And then the header, container and footer components have their own child components. Now let's say what we want is, we want to pass data from this search component to this product list component. Now, this search component is not related to this product list component in any way. We have learned how we can pass data from a parent component to child component and from a child component to parent component. For that, we can use custom property binding and custom event binding. But so far we have not learned how we can pass data from two non-related components. We can surely achieve this by using a combination of custom property binding and custom event binding. But so far, we have not seen any way in which we can directly communicate between two non-related components. But we can achieve this using services. And we are going to see that with an example in this section. So this was a very high level overview of what is a service in Angular and what is its use. In the next lecture, we are going to learn how we can create a service and use it in our Angular application.